The number one is a divine number, the beginning, first, the source of all things. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1 to 1. The number one, in Hebrew, ekhad, is an adjective used to express the concept of the oneness and uniqueness of God, as in Deuteronomy 6 to 4, which states, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And also Jesus said in Mark 12, 29, And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The number Echad for God represents a complex unity. The Hebrew word for God, Elohim, uses the plural form but with a singular verb indicating the complex oneness of God. The word Echad for unity doesn't signify a mathematical quantity, but a complex unity. God, who is one and is called the Father, the Almighty, has a unique presence because within his oneness, he has only begotten Son who is not created, but begotten of the Father not at some point in time, but before all ages, from eternity. This means that in eternity, God within his own nature begets the only begotten Son as the radiance or reflection of himself. Who is the light that comes from light? The number one signifies the source of all things. All nations come from the one Creator who is one, and He created one man, Adam, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation, Acts 17, 26. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit, 1 Corinthians 15:45. Sin entered the world through one man. Grace is bestowed through one man, Jesus Christ, Romans 5.15. The Bible mentions to contrasting figures named Adam, the first man Adam who fell into sin and the last Adam who rectifies sin. The first Adam not only became the progenitor of all humankind, but also transmitted original sin to all people. The first sin, original sin, Adam's sin, has a distinctive impact on all of humanity? The first Adam is called the father of perdition, while the last Adam is called the father of eternity. He is Jesus Christ, Isaiah 9 to 6. However, it's important to note that the title father of eternity here doesn't imply that Jesus is called God the Father. Another meaning of one is found in the concept of Jesus self-offering as a sacrifice until death, which is a what time event for all eternity, Hebrews 7:27. This signifies the eternal priesthood of his messiahship. Christ remains forever and is not subject to death, the devil. Sin and death have already been defeated. Therefore, he can save completely and eternally anyone who calls upon him. Our High Priest, Jesus Christ, is able to help us remain faithful and not be defeated in our lives and struggles. This assistance continues without interruption. That's why this verse also says, He lives forever to intercede. In Hebrews for 14 to 16, as followers of Christ, we are encouraged to approach His throne of grace. As the King and forerunner, He is our ultimate goal. As the High Priest, He is the access for us. Another meaning of one is that He is the firstborn, who rose from the dead, the firstborn among the dead, Colossians 1.18. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature, Colossians 1.15. Verse 15 is often misinterpreted by Unitarians as an affirmation that Jesus is merely a created being. However, what the Apostle Paul writes in Colossians 1:15 to 19 emphasizes Christ as Lord and God. This verse does not imply a dualism, where Jesus Christ is both creature and creator. There is no notion of creature applied to Jesus Christ. In this passage, in context, what Paul is expressing with firstborn, Greek, 
Pyro Omega Tau Omicron Tau Omicron Kappa Omicron Sigma Pirito Tokos is not just first, but also carries the connotation of supreme. So, Jesus Christ is above all. Being the firstborn of creation does not mean that. Jesus is a creature. Christ becomes the head of the church, the head controls the body, and the church is his body. So the meaning of firstborn here indicates that he is the preeminent one among his created church. The church is not merely a group of individuals. It is defined by its organic relationship with Christ, the head. Colossians 1.19 For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness plerma dwell. One also signifies a single purpose Luke 10.42 and expresses the unity between Christ and the Father, John 10.30. The unity between believers and God, and the unity among Christians. The concept of unity is also emphasized in Jesus' teaching on marriage, they will become one flesh, Matthew 19-6. God's unity invites his church to be united in faith in Jesus, Christ. Believers in Jesus Christ, are worthy to be called children of God and become part of God's family. As Christians, we are one big family with God as the head of the family. We are one flock with one shepherd, John 20, 16. We are also likened to one body, 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. In addition to the number one, Ekad, there is the number one in the sense of only one singular, Hebrew, Yaqid. The word, Yaqid Arabic, Wahid means singular. And it derives from the word, Yakad, which is Shoresh, Kad, with the addition of the letter Yad at the beginning. In ancient Hebrew, the Yad character represents a hand holding something. The word, Yakad also means one or unity but in the sense of one in the grip, which signifies absolute oneness, only or only. The word, yak had, can also be found in Psalm 86 to 11. Unite and Isaiah 14, 20 together. Yak had is, cad in the grip of a hand. Translated as only one, singular, only, just, alone. Often associated with the only child. If ek had refers to complex unity, then, Yaqid is related to absolute unity. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only Yaqid son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah.